What is the most unbelievable instance of computer illiteracy you've ever witnessed? 1995-96, we, a small consultancy, got a call from an accountant who told us that his new PC system's HDD was reporting as full and he felt that was unlikely. I was sent to investigate and found that his HDD was indeed returning errors. I asked him what software he used and he said MS-DOS. I rephrased and asked what software he used for his accounting. He said again, MS-DOS. I asked him to show me and he began, straightforwardly enough at the time, by navigating to a working subdirectory. He then proceeded to create file after file after file. It turned out he was using DOS as a filing system, creating individual records by creating corresponding files. He wrote nothing in the file. All his information was contained in his choice of file names and extensions. It all worked. It did what he wanted, but it had put him at the limit of what a DOS file system could handle at the time. That's like learning how to walk on your hands because you can't figure out feet. It was me, a long time ago, before webcams were common. I ended up at this webpage where it said something like there was a new technology where the screen would take your picture and then show it to you. So I went and brushed my hair, changed my shirt and came back to get my picture. I smiled and pressed the button. It made like a flash and then said to wait up to 5 minutes for the result. I waited patiently as I saw the picture slowly loading, only to finally reveal a picture of an orangutan. My first case of being trolled by the internet. That's an absolutely brilliant post, D. I work with a guy, who for 2 months and countless visits from our IT guy, claimed that his computer was still going slow. So the IT guy set a dead computer tower, which isn't even plugged into anything, next to the one that he was using and now my co-worker says it goes twice as fast. It's called the PC bow effect. A co-worker of mine, an older gentleman, knew how to use Excel, but nothing else. When he needed to type up a document, instead of opening up a word processor, he would open up Excel and just type his document into one cell that he enlarged to the size of an 8.5x11 piece of paper. Well at least he's resourceful and able to problem solve. My uncle has step by step instructions for accessing his email, which is the only thing he does on his computer. Anytime he makes a mistake, he shuts down the computer and starts over. He also moves the mouse into position, takes his hand off completely, then pokes the button very carefully. Comma he also moves the mouse into position, takes his hand off completely, then pokes the button very carefully. This is awesome. I've seen older people do this. The first email my dad sent me when I went away to college, and the first email he ever wrote, didn't have any spaces in it. It was just one long word dotted with occasional punctuation. He didn't know what the space bar was and thought the computer would just add the spaces automatically. It was hilariously adorable and every time I think about it I get a little sad I didn't print out and frame that email. The only way to teach an old person to type is to tell them the keys are almost exactly like a typewriter, but you don't have to press as hard. I work as tech support at a university, so computer illiteracy keeps me employed. There's one professor I've had to teach to right click on multiple occasions. Also, just last week a woman, corporate client, called about a strange message on her computer. Outlook had detected she moved time zones and asked if she wanted her laptop to change times to reflect her new location. It's just asking if you want to adjust your email to your new time zone since you're an hour earlier here. So I'll get my emails an hour earlier? Some people really think computers are magic. Back in the days of MS-DOS and the good old Windows 3.1, my uncle picked up a new PC, a powerhouse of the time. He never had a PC. He'd been a Commodore 64 guy for a long time though. Anyway, I visited my grandparents, where he also lived, and he showed me his computer. I was in awe. It was so good compared to my own. I played a game of strife and after went out to play. Later that day I'm asked by my grandmother what did you do to your uncle's computer? I don't know what she's talking about and go to talk to him. He's mad. The thing won't boot and I broke it. Get it to boot and check out the HDD. It's in shambles. I ask, what were you doing when it stopped working? Deleting files you put on there. I don't need your garbage on my machine. He deleted random files from the OS until it stopped working. Long story short, uh, 
In one day I reinstalled DOS and Windows on that thing 6 times. Yes. He kept doing it and wouldn't listen when I told him he couldn't just do that. I never touched his PC again afterwards. He still brings up the time I broke his new computer. That would be met with no, you broke your computer 6 times and I fixed it for you for free every time it came up. Public shaming is the only viable tool there. I worked in tech support in the mid 90s at a company where computers for admins and sales were a relatively new thing. So I have a million stories. Got a call from an employee insisting her new, tested mouse wasn't working. Went through all the questions, is it plugged and do you see the arrow on the screen? And could hear her clicking so I knew she was at least doing something. I finally went to her desk and saw that she was using her mouse up against the monitor. Trying to click on things right on the screen instead of understanding the mouse pad on the desk. Cursor on the screen set up. That's absolutely precious. My mom seriously thinks she can only access email from the computer on which it was set up. She has created a new email address for each new computer she got. I'm a graphic designer and I once had a client sitting to next to me whilst designing her a logo. I zoomed into the logo on screen and she said, Oh no, not that big, I explained it wasn't going to be that big and I was just making it bigger on the screen so it's easier to edit. Thought she understood until I zoomed out a few minutes later and she said, Oh yes that's a better size. I once caught my little brother, then around age 10, holding a ruler against the screen to measure the size of the pictures of a collage he was planning to print. He's going into graphic design now. Sure come a long way. Work in IT for a large corporation and I had a senior lawyer. Mid 30s at my company complained that the Wi-Fi wasn't working when she left the building. Needless to say I was staggered by the ineptitude. Took a physics course from a professor who got their PhD in biomechanical physics, i.e. how fast the cell moves or at what rate does the mitochondrial proteins work. Complicated science stuff. One day the professor was using PowerPoint for a lecture. The Adobe update icon popped up and they had no idea how to resolve it. They restarted the computer and within 5 minutes it popped up again. The entire class watched in amazement as this professor struggled with the Adobe update icon. The professor cancelled class for IT to come fix the issue. It's always amazing watching professors with years of training and knowledge in a specific field struggle with the simplest of problems. Coworker asked me to turn the clicking sound off on her keyboard. She thought that the sound keys make when you type on the computer keyboard was a sound effect similar to when you type on a cell phone. Nope. It was her long fake nails making the keys clack. She refused to believe me. So I told her to call tech support. No idea how they handled it. LOL. Unplug it, then have her type. In recent memory, I can recall an instance where my mom had a recipe open in Chrome. And I wanted to show her a YouTube video. I opened another tab in the browser and she got mad at me because she thought I deleted the recipe. One time I heard my dad cursing at his computer in the basement. It started with single word shoots and dammits and slowly progressed itself into a rage. Finally with a tone of desperation he called for my help. I walked in. I was working and then it just disappeared and I can't get it back. He explained. His hands moving wildly from me to the screen to the sky. It's gone. As he went on, I stooped over with the mouse and dragged up the window that apparently had been moved and was peeking just above the tusk bar. He facer palmed and gave me a light jab on the shoulder in appreciation. What would I do without you? I love my dad. But I fear for him now that I live on my own. Slowly progressed itself into a rage. What would I do without you? Rage against the machine. Not an instance, but an ongoing series of what the frick is wrong with you? Mid 90s, early days of using the web to interface data with outside entities. I developed a process at work to interface our mainframe with an external print service. It requires the user to download the mainframe files, sign on to the remote site, and upload the files. The process takes place 7 or 8 times a year. I documented it step by step. I explained it to my manager and the user's manager. They agreed the process is logical and straightforward. I showed the end users how to do it. They seemed to understand. Three years later and I was still changing the documentation to account for all the ways the users found to not follow the step by step documentation. Nearly every billing run was screwed up because they found new and interesting ways to frick up. 
Click with the left button. No, not the right. Why are you double clicking? Why are you double clicking so slow? Why are you double right clicking? Mashing the mouse button does not make the computer understand what you meant to do. Try not to move the mouse halfway across the screen when you click. Oh, that last one should have been an acceptable defense for justifiable homicide. All these issues result in bizarre web form behavior. And that was just the clicking. If they got the clicking right, it was what they were clicking inside and outside the browser window that screwed it all up. BTW, the process takes place in the middle of the night and they would either call me, read, wake, so I could walk them through it, bad, or not call me and our billing would be delayed, worse because the billing data was dated. Guess who had to do damage control on the data to fix the issue? 20 years later and one of the users still calls me to walk him through it. At least now, the process takes place during the workday and I can be on hand to help. In the battle of making idiot proof software, the idiots will always win. I love my dad, but it still boggles my mind how computer illiterate he can be. Of all the situations, I'd say this one takes the cake. His laptop needed to be fixed for some reason, so he was using my sister's laptop at the time. He calls me up to tell me he can't find his files. Confused, I asked him to explain what he means. He says that he always keeps all of his folders files on his desktop, but that none of them are there. I say to him, but you're using your daughter's computer. How would you have access to files on your computer? There's a brief moment of silence until he says to me, but the files are on my desktop. Shouldn't I be able to access them now? Suffice to say, I had to explain a few things to him then, most of which just went in one ear and out the other. I don't know if this fits, but a young lady in the office complained her computer would randomly lose power while she was working. After a lot of effort to solve the problem, including changing out the computer, the problem was determined to be her height. Since she was short, she used the power strip to prop her feet, and kept accidentally pushing the power button. Happens to me all the time. Not necessarily computer illiteracy, but I have an old man come by my work once a week and has me unlock his iPhone. He doesn't have a password, just needs to swipe right to unlock the screen. Don't even know what he does with it afterwards. I used to work as the tech guy in a high school. One day, the head teacher's secretary called me to reception because the fax machine wasn't working. I had a look at it and it seemed to work fine. So I asked her to show me what she was doing when the fault occurred. So she put the document in the slot, typed in the number, the machine word up and the document popped out the other side, as normal. You see she said, no, not really, what's the problem? She looked at me like I was a complete and utter moron, snatched up the document and started waving it at me saying it's still here. And that's why I had to explain to a grown woman that a fax machine isn't a teleportation device. Somewhere. Someone was getting the same thing faxed a lot. I sincerely hope my wife does not have a secret reddit account or for that matter, does not know my reddit account. If she does find this out, I'll probably not be alive. Whenever we had internet issues, she would yank out the RJ45 from the cable modem, blow air into it 10 times and place it back into the modem. I never understood this ritual, until one day I took up the courage to ask why. The response I got was that, since she was accessing too many sites, there could be a blockage in the modem. I did ask her the same question several times over the course of the next few years. I once convinced a person that the reason they needed a new ethernet cable was that the cable had been squashed and all the zeros had jammed the wire because it was too narrow now and only the ones would fit through. Retired co-worker Wit would forget all her passwords about 3 times a week. Also, her phone had a bunch of memory cleaner and battery saver apps which actually slowed it down and made the battery discharge faster. My dad has a bunch of those apps on his phone and I'm unconvinced they don't do exactly what you said. He believes them. So. My co-worker doesn't know how to create a PDF directly on the computer so she prints things out then scans them to create a PDF. A lady at my work couldn't figure out how to take a screenshot of a web page, so she printed it out and scanned it and then sent it as an all-staff message. 
My grandfather, bless him, in his late 70s just learning how to use a computer, and he would enjoy spending an hour or so in the evenings getting creative using the paint app on his laptop. I was talking to him about replacing the ink in his printer as it was running low. Then a look of horror came over him and he leaned in closely and said, Em I've been using the paint app on my computer how much ink have I been wasting? He thought using the paint on his computer, without printing it, was using up his expensive ink. Bless him that still makes me laugh. My nana asked my mother where the film went into her mobile phone when taking a photo. I work in recruiting and I will often ask people to email me over their resume. Not only will many people not know how to do that, some will try and fail miserably. I had one guy, he was older, tell me multiple times that he has his resume saved in his email and that I can go log on to his email and go get it. I said no, that's not how email works. You have to send it to where you want it to go. He proceeded to tell me his email address and say a game that I can just log on and get it. Wasn't worth trying to explain anymore. Another woman told me that she can't email her resume to me because her email address is at yahoo.com and ours is at companyname.com and they are different. I explained to her that oh, the domain name doesn't matter, you can email to any domain names that you want. They are just different companies and we'll still receive the email. She tried to argue with me saying that she has Yahoo and only can send to other Yahoo. I again tried to explain and told her how just like calling people with different area codes. It's just a way to classify and you can send an email to any email address. She wasn't getting it. We never got her resume. As a college student nearing graduation, it calms my nerves that there are people this clueless in the workforce. End user thought she could reboot her machine by turning the monitor off on. I got curious when it only took 2 seconds for her to restart, so I had to walk to her cube to see for myself. I hate it when people do that, they always get so defensive of it too. I have a co-worker who made a powerpoint presentation by taking pictures of her computer screen with her smartphone, emailing them to herself and then putting them in the presentation, instead of using print screen or snipping tool, it was both hilarious and embarrassing. At the place I work at, this older woman that doesn't understand the concept of tabs will literally use multiple computers in our computer lab for each window she opens. I've explained to her what tabs are probably like 5 times and she still refuses to understand. Be careful what you wish for, I recently discovered that my mother had literally like 1000 tabs open in Safari on her iPad. It was so bogged down she almost bought a new one. My mom came to me and told me that a window had appeared on the computer. I went with her to see what it was. There was nothing there. I asked her why there wasn't anything there, and she told me that she had closed it. I told her that there was nothing I could do, and to leave it open if it came back. Next day she comes and tells me that it came back, so I go with her to her computer. There's nothing there. She had closed it again. I repeat what I had told her the day before. And she starts getting annoyed at me for not being able to fix her computer. This keeps happening and I grow savvy. One day when she comes to me I ask if she closed it again, which she did. I refuse to drop what I'm doing to come look at her wallpaper. And she gets angry at me for being unhelpful. After this she stops coming to me. If I had to guess I'd say she went to my dad to get him to fix the computer and got the same message from him. When I got my first optical mouse I spent a whole afternoon trying get it to work, downloading drivers, rebooting, googling tech websites, repeat, turned out it wouldn't work on a black table. When my friend's mum finds an error in her text she will delete everything she has written since the mistake, correct it, and then retype the whole thing. It's like what we do with passwords when we make a typo, because it's hidden we just delete the whole thing and start again, or at least I do. Tried to teach my 89 year old grandmother the internet because I told her it had recipes on it. An hour and 30 minutes of my life I want back. We had a bad experience hiring a computer programmer for my company once. We ended up using a recruiter due to a lack of initial candidates. Most of the new candidates weren't local. So we held Skype video interviews. One of the applicants couldn't get his camera working for the technical interview. So we did a phone interview. He aced the all of our technical questions. And we ended up hiring him. 
the guy moves and shows up for his first day. As part of the orientation he has to read some documents on a shared drive. When told to find them on the already mapped network drive he looked confused. He was walked through that, but then he was told to open an app, and couldn't find it, since there were no shortcuts on his desktop. He was told to open the start menu and search for it. He failed at opening the start menu. A computer programmer couldn't use basic Windows functions. He was terminated a short time later. It seems like the recruiting company provided a stand-in for the interview process, so they paid us back for our expenses and we don't use them anymore. I once witnessed the owner of a fairly large company work the mouse while a subordinate worked the keyboard. They were older gentlemen. It was adorable. Like two toddlers working on a Rubik's Cube. I sometimes do that as a challenge with my friends. Playing CS. Go. My mom sent me a text asking if my internet was out because hers wasn't working. I reminded her that we lived 1200 miles away from each other. She was just checking on the global communications network. Since you put computer illiteracy in quotes, this is not computer related, just technology related. My grandmother was from the old country and never learned to speak English. She kept asking us to buy a TV that was made in the old country, so that she could watch TV shows in her native tongue. I worked with a woman who would tell me her web page was wrong. She didn't have a web page. It took me a while to figure out she meant her desktop display. Her excuse? I can't remember all those terms. You'll just have to know what I call stuff. I had to do support for the whole office. She thought it was perfectly reasonable that I should learn 12 different names for common computer things instead of her having to learn the correct ones. She was also a bee. She's also dead now. And I don't care. When my granddad got a new computer, he set everything up and wanted to plug in the mouse into the HME port. He jammed it in, it didn't work. He jammed it the other way around, it obviously didn't work. So he stripped the USB cable and soldered IT into the port. Now that's dedication. Way back in the day when my family got our first computer, we were all learning how to use it. This was in the early 90s and PCs didn't do a whole lot. Ours was basically a glorified word processor with memory and solitaire. One day my mom was writing some poetry in word and after having saved the file decided it was embarrassing or something and wanted to delete it. Unable to find the right file, she somehow ended up deleting some seriously crucial stuff and I ended up having to reinstall MS-DOS and Windows all over again. Off of 3.5 discs. If I had to estimate how many discs this took I'd say between 30 and frick my life. We got our first computer when I was 13. I was the only one in the house with computer experience, and it wasn't a lot. I don't remember what, exactly, my father wanted me to do to it, but it was something along the lines of rewriting the OS, Win 98, to make a working man's computer. He was very upset that I wasn't willing to try and hack Windows. Some 18 years ago Kevin was having a new database program deployed in his auto body shop. The technician was showing him how to navigate around the program when Kevin gave him a pad of paper and pen and asked the tech to write down the steps he needed to know. The tech took the pad and pen and began to write. In just a few seconds he handed the pad back to Kevin. Somewhat bewildered Kevin grasped the paper and looked down to see three words. Read the screen. I used to work in IT at a high school around 2011 and got a few amazing ones. One teacher called me in for an unrelated issue. The setup was a really crappy one where the tower was right next to the mouse pad. I asked her to click something for me. She moved the mouse to the right until it touched the tower and then instead of readjusting her position, she went up the side of the tower with the mouse, clicked, then held it there. I tried to act professional and not laugh. But I have no doubts that my eyes were sticking out of my head while I strained to not die laughing right there. These people educate your children. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.